You know, I just fight the way I fight. I'm not worried about the 100 wins. And I just, I just do my, my fights according to what I, what I want to do. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali. Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. Hi, I'm Montel Williams, and I'm here at the Thomas and Mack Center. And no, you have not tuned into a Saturday edition of the Montel Williams Show. What you've tuned into is Showtime, Don King production, and the Mirage big production this evening of Star Spangled Glory, three world championship fights. We're only two hours away from the start of that undercard, and I'm telling you, it's already starting to get a little exciting in here. The press is starting to show up, and we even have some of the celebrities starting to show up. The mood in, in the building is getting starting to swell. People are ready for the fight. And behind me, as you can see, there, there was some light sparring going on a little earlier. They're trying to warm up the ring. But things are definitely headed towards the big bout. And I'm telling you, it's rumored that tonight people like Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, even Jean-Claude Van Damme might be here to watch the fight. Everybody's ready for it, and including the main man who's helping to put this on, Don King himself. Now, everybody's wondered up until this point whether or not Don was going to back Tucker or Lewis or what was really going on. Today, Don King walked down and placed a bet on the man that he thinks will win tonight. And I'm going to tell you, when I say a bet, I'm not talking about chump change. Don King walked in with $200,000. Listen to me. $200,000 and placed his bet today on Tony Tucker. Take a look at this tape. Where's Jimmy? Doing? Well, I'm yeah. going to be here. Here's the man, Ma. Give me my bag. Good to give me my money, man. And my live my list out. What I'm coming here for today is uh, is to make my staff happy. Because I'm going to make some bets on Tony Tucker. For all my people, and I want Jimmy, can I give these people's names in that? Because it's all under 10. And they can be able to get the hold of them. DK, tell your guy he can't use the phone in there. You, you no, know, you can't use no phone in anything. Oh, yeah, well, he's, he's trying to get his man. Yeah, he's trying to get his man. But don't, it, don't really, it doesn't matter. It's too late now, anyway. Just forget about it. Explain it. You know what I mean? DK, I'll get me one guy with the driver's license, and it's all taken care of. Okay, what about taking my social security number? Either or your social security number. Okay, 297. All right. Uh, Lori, I... Lori, come here. Get, get a 6A for me. Okay. Okay, I want to bet. I'm going to bet for my senior staff. I want to bet um, for David Fox. 5000 for David Fox. Now, and uh, I want a ticket. I want one ticket for five thousand, right? So I can get at the David Fox. Okay. All right. Give me one ticket. Five thousand and one ticket for Sierra Tucker. Five thousand. Okay. Separate tickets. Tom. Separate tickets. Tucker. Five thousand. All right. Okay. I got a ticket for Rich Hummers. Five thousand for Rich Hummers. Five thousand for Jim Merlin. Five thousand for Dana Jameson. Five thousand for Peyton Sure. Five thousand for Al Braverman. Can I work for you? Put my name on the list. Five thousand for Debbie King Lee. Five 
5,000 for Carl King. 5,000 for Mohammed Khan. What's your business address? Huh? What's your business address? 32 East 69th Street, New York, New York, 10021. And I want 10,000 for Henrietta King. And um, okay, you got ten for Henrietta King. Let's see now. How much is that? How much did that add up to? Fifty-five. 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 And a hundred thousand for Don King. Ticket for Mike Marley. Mike Marley. Boy, he's really reaching now, John. <laughs> I want a thousand dollar ticket for Eddie Mapoose. Thousand dollar ticket for Brenda Page. Brenda Page, Eddie Mapoose, Mike Marley. Did I get sober? Five thousand dollar ticket for sober. Five thousand. That's the type of sober. Five thousand for sober. Okay, now wait a minute. You got thousand for Mercury. This is Mephus, Molly, and who else did I say? Sober. No, sober. Brenda, Brenda Page. Brenda. Brenda Page. Okay. I got the three for Brenda, Eddie Mapoose, and that. Please. Okay. And now you got the one for Brenda, and you got 5,000 for Sober. Oh, it's wonderful. 
Now I can talk to my crew. Tell them what this all is, what all this is all about. Uh, initially here we got a hundred and a hundred and sixty-eight, hundred and sixty-eight thousand that I bet on my staff, a ticket for each one of my staff members. That's my senior management that's been with me through the struggle, because we know we're so confident that Tony Tucker is going to win this fight tonight. That I'm going to give each one of these people one of their tickets. Each one to get their ticket, and then they will have an. They will also be able to have a rooting interest on a fair complete. Is going to be a changing of the guard tonight here at the Mirage Hotel when Tony Tucker knocks out Lennox Lewis and becomes the new WBC heavyweight champion of the world. We believe. Now we must go out and see Tony Tucker's new car. He has a Mercedes 500 that is outside that we'll get a chance to show the American public only in America what we do for our own. Let me ask you, you bet personally $100,000, I don't know what the odds are offhand. What are you going to do with that money if you, when you win? When I win that money, I'm going to find something to do that would be magnanimous, something that would be noteworthy of trying to do something for those who are less fortunate. You know? And it's, it means a lot to me because Tony should share from the struggle that Tony come from, the environment that he come from, and be able to rise to the occasion and redirect his life to new Tony Tucker in a more constructive and positive and constructive manner, then I think that the world should know about this young man, his struggles, his trials and tribulations, and his rewards for believing in Jesus Christ and the faith that he has in God and the confidence that he brings into the ring tonight. So I want to share that with the greatest people in the world, the American people. Let me ask you this. We always used to promote us selling wolf tickets about their fighters. You're putting your money where your mouth is. Was this, when did this idea come to you? It was like a spiritual inspiration. I was lying there in the bed, and it nudged me. It said, you keep talking and talking. People think it's hype. Then let's go out and put your money where your mouth is. Let's go out there and deal. I'm not only putting my money, I'm putting my reputation. I am saying confidently, emphatically, without a doubt, unequivocally, you know what I mean, undeniably, that Tony Tucker will knock out Lennox Lewis. And this is what the deal is going to be when, he cha when the changing of the guard comes tonight with the WBC. Showtime King Vision SET will have a heavyweight champion. So look out, guys out there, all you competitors. We are breaking through the line, and we are going to score a touchdown. Give me the line drop. Give me the line drop. Uh, this, actually, let me pull Jimmy right out with you. I'll tell you what, that's what is meant when they say somebody believes in their fighter. I'm talking unbelievable $200,000 bet, and that's with conviction on a man that he thinks will be the future heavyweight champion in the world, and that's Tony Tucker. Now, Lennox Lewis is not without his followers. It's rumored that some of his people even leased a Concord to fly here, and there's probably around 4,000 uh, Brits that are here just coming in to see this fight. Additionally, along with the, the Lewis and Tucker fight, there are three other championship fights, and you don't want to miss any of these. All of them are going to be stunning. All of them are going to be power-packed and filled. I'll tell you what, the first fight is Julian Jackson, 46-1, and one, going up against Gerald McClellan, who is 27-2. and two. If you have to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom before this starts. And I'll tell you what, if you don't go to the bathroom, when you go, <laughs> by the time you get ready to run there, Julio Cesar Chavez and Terrence Ali are going to be there. 86-0 and 0 with Julio Cesar Chavez and 52-7-2 and 2 with Terrence Ali. Ali says he's going to send Chavez back home with his first loss. And, of course, we know what the main event is. Lennox Lewis and Tony Tucker, 22-0 and 0 with Lennox Lewis. A lot of people think he's not really that well tested. A lot of people think he may not have the gusto and he may be in awe of all of this that's going on here. And then comes Tony Tucker. 48 and 1, his only loss to Mike Tyson, and a lot of people credit him with the ability of Buster Douglas and other people to really put up a real solid fight and to beat Mike Tyson. So it's going to be fireworks tonight. You don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, if you haven't called up, you got about another hour and a half, get on the phone, call up, and make sure that you order Star Spangle Glory tonight. Because if you don't, you're going to be really left out. And besides that, on Sunday, when you see the replays, you're going to go, oh man, I wish I had gotten that. Now, it's getting exciting here in the, in the ring now. We have a little bit of sp sparring going on back here. Some of the people sparring are doing nothing but warming up the mat because when we come back for the main events, I'm telling you, there may be three bodies down, laid out. I don't know which three it'll be. 
You know, if you listen to Don King, $200,000 worth of a bet, say Lennox Lewis will be there. I watched Tony Tucker in his training session. Tony Tucker looked real good. He looked real good. He was throwing multiple combinations. I also saw Lennox Lewis look just a little bit like, uh, what the devil am I doing in Las Vegas? So, watch tonight. Make sure you order it. Order it now on pay-per-view. Star Spangled Glory. You can't miss this. And again, I'm Montel Williams. And no, you haven't tuned into the Montel Williams Show. This is the real deal. The real deal live from the Thomas and Mack Center. Star Spangled Glory. Go order it now. Make that a very interesting fight because... Lennox Lewis, in spite of having a, a nice record and an impressive win over uh, Ray Zerudic, is still a youngster in the, in the heavyweight uh, division. He's good, he can box well, he has desire, and he has talent. Against him, however, the unknown coefficient here is what's lacking in Tucker. If he finds what's lacking, then we're going to see a really good heavyweight fight. And what's lacking with him is fire, desire, anger, all that melted together that which makes a man refuse to lose, that, that which makes a man win when things are down. The great fighters had it, Marciano, Ali, Lewis, everybody has that desire to win. Tucker, unfortunately, has a huge amount of talent, is very big, punches hard, takes a good punch, but has not demonstrated an inordinate desire to go out and hurt people and win and in a devastating fashion, as Tyson did for that brief flurry of, of his span of uh, boxing life. So if Tucker can be motivated, and his camp now has new trainers, new managers, and they're getting him mad, and they're getting him in shape, and he comes in with the best shape of his life, really intent on winning the heavyweight champion, he's got a wonderful chance to upset Lennox Lewis and win. But if it's missing, Lennox Lewis will go right through him. Lewis Tucker is a great uh, fight. Uh, a lot of people, uh, Tucker's never been on his backside. He takes a great shot big strong guy this is the lewis test in my mind because he's fighting a bona fide big heavyweight and this is a guy that uh all of a sudden there's a turnaround oddly enough we got a secret weapon in, in the woodworks with uh tucker uh little dan dothard the kid that works with me with michael nunn helps get michael physically ready trains him. he don't have no monitor he's not a fitness coach or he's former track runner himself well-conditioned guy he's the bum that can put uh, a glass on top of his biceps and i get a little jealous and i try it once in a while i get wet all the time but dan dothard has got this guy juiced for a change tucker's going to be in condition uh the trainers are doing a heck of a job but the little thing like dan dothard is going to help tucker in fact he's coming uh you're going to see him and uh tucker to me is going to be in the best shape of his life and i think the realization hey, I can win a, a title, is there. Tucker's going to be a tough, tough opponent for Lewis. I make it a heck of a fight. I think it'll be a knockdown, drag out type of a fight. Uh, it'll slow down in spots because both guys are going to respect each other. But you got to remember, Tucker could take you out of there with either hand. And uh, he's hot to trot. Lewis, it's a proving stage right now because we've seen Lewis in shots where he didn't look that good in the United States. Lewis is for real. He could fight. He's a big, strong guy. Uh, not that awesome a whacker like he looked with Ruddick, because Ruddick, Ruddick wasn't with us that night, put it to you that way. Uh, he got nailed and didn't get out of there. But the point I like about this fight, two big guys, and that's what people want to see. It's going to be a great matchup, great, great fight. I won't be the most amazing guy on the planet if Tucker wins it. The King of England is coming to America. His name is Lennox Lewis, and he's the heavyweight champion. Riddick's bow met the King and was quickly dispatched. Razor Ruddick's departure was equally abrupt. On May 8th, the King will grant an audience to Tony Tucker, the number one contender. Tucker has little respect for royalty. God may save the Queen, but nobody's going to save Lennox Lewis. Lewis versus Tucker, heavyweight championship, Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. Tony did very well against uh, uh, Tyson. He had a terrific uppercut, you know, and uh, the fight went 12 rounds, and Tony had a bad hand. And so he, he, he really handled himself quite well. He was a very proud individual, and he did his job. 
And I think that uh, I think he's one of the best heavyweights out there today. The only question will have to be answered is can his body rise to the occasion to follow the dictates of his mind? If so, it's hands down he's going to beat this boy, uh, Lennox Lewis. You know, whether or not this man can be restored to that, uh, to that height again uh, remains to be seen. But from everything, from every indication, I think he's in the pursuit of uh, uh, happiness here because he has worked very hard for it. He has more skills than any of the heavyweights out there. He can punch. He can box. He has a lot of slick moves. And so what happened to him, he survived and was fighting, not what, like Bone Crusher see a lot of two or three guys went to distance with Tyson. One of them was Bone Crusher Smith, you know what I mean, but he just wanted to survive. He didn't try to win. Tucker was trying to win and at the same time survive. So you had a fight. It wasn't just a one-sided fight where you could, he, you could walk away with it. Tucker has the courage and the heart, the intestinal fortitude to go on out there and fight. And if he can fight Tyson for 12 rounds, then he shouldn't have too much trouble fighting another awesome fighter in Lennox Lewis, but the exchange would be neutralized by their, both of their abilities. Both of them are six foot five. Both of them, Tucker has a terrific jab, you know, much more precise than Lennox Lewis. And he knows how to throw better combinations. Now, but Lennox Lewis is an awesome puncher. So now when you see a guy like Lennox Lewis that's coming in to punch like he is, Tucker's going to be in the best of shape, have the greatest of stamina and resiliency, you know what I mean? Because He's going to get hit, and this is when your body starts to reacting because if, you have, if it's just a facade or if it's just superficiality of the looking like Adonis, but you don't have that intestinal fortitude, that substance that's there, then when he reached down for his second win, it won't be there, or he'll get hit, and then it'll be like a stopping the time, you know, and that will be something that he will, you know, we'll have to deal with because he won't be able to function, you know. But if he can function and, and, and things are going right and he goes in that ring with a clear, focused mind, we're looking at the next champion of the world. I think Lennox Lewis right now could arguably be the best heavyweight in the world, including uh, Riddick Bowe. After the demolition of Razor Ruddick, I think he proved that not only can he punch, but he's very disciplined. He didn't get drawn into a brawl that he, that he wasn't ready for. He's very, very disciplined and very focused. I think he takes his job very seriously. We don't see him doing what many of the heavyweights do, blowing up enormous amounts of pounds previous to fights and after other fights. We see a very, uh, very uh, expert-like uh, gentleman working, and I think that he's probably going to win that fight and eventually going to unify, unless Mike Tyson gets out in time. Then we can have a, a real fight. I think uh, Lewis out, out boxing. You know, probably later on, you know, just take it out of Tucker. You know, Tucker tends to tire out, you know, being in real good shape. So I, I see a. Uh, I'm just taking it out of him in the later round. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing Lewis just going right, right to him to see what, see what Tucker has left. And, you know, body shots, head shots, trying to, trying to take him out early and um, just trying to wear him down. Um, for Tucker, I see Tucker trying to stick a move, uh, needing the box to stay away from him, hoping that uh, he, can, he can take him in the later rounds and hopefully that Lewis will tire and that strength can take a little of that strength away from him. But um, I still see Lewis uh, you know, coming out the win. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali. Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. Julio Cesar Chavez is the finest fighter fighting today. You would take a, take a super fighter like Pernell Whitaker or Terry Norris to beat him. Terrence Ali at one point was headed toward being a good fighter. He had a lot of hard fights. He's no longer in that kind of league where you can consider him a, uh, a devastating opponent or one which is going to give him a real hard time. So Chavez in what amounts to a tune-up uh, for the fight against Pernell Whitaker, easily. Terrence Ali is a good ring veteran with a lot of skills and a tenacious attitude, but uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, just, he does it all. He does it all so very well. I think there's going to be difficult for uh, Terrence Ali to devise anything that can, can really stop him. I think Ali's only chance of beating uh, Chavez would be to 
use a jab, a lot of movement, whack them in the body and bring some punches up, in and out, in and out, and never get caught. You know, conversely, Chavez has just got to do his usual work, his way in. He throws punches to the head and body in combination better than anyone I've ever seen. He does it progressively better as the fight goes on, so by the time the late rounds come, most people are out of there. Chavez Ali, uh, I'd like to see in that matchup uh, five years ago. It uh, would have been very interesting. Chavez, to me, is the complete, uh, I call him the meat grinder. He actually grinds you down, works you over, tactician, best fighter around, uh, a joy to watch. So the fans are going to be in for a great night because Terrence Ali is getting a shot at the title. He wants it badly. He don't, he's a tough guy to dissuade. But that's what Chavez does. He dissuades you. He stays on you, stays on you, and grinds you. As you can ask all the guys that fought Chavez, looks like he's not doing that much, but he effortlessly does it. Smooth, slick, smart. A man who wants to dominate the ring, and he does. He's a great fighter. Terrence Ali is a great fighter. Chavez wants to challenge the best. So we have a guy here now, 86 and 0, taking on this Terrence Ali, who's the number one contender in all three organizations. That means wrist is there for, for Chavez. So this means that you got a good fight. If you put Chavez in, everybody say now that he'll become like a Mike Tyson. Oh, I don't need a looking at this guy because he who how's he gonna win? And then we went to Tokyo and Mike lost. So he became mortal. Well right now Julio Cesar Chavez stars are sitting to the heavens. He's eighty six and zero. He has one of the biggest fights of his life five months down the line with Pernell Whitaker. Every fight means a lot to him. Every, every fight he gets in them now has a major risk factor. So whatever fight he fights, it's got to be very important because the importance of that fight means $15, $20 million grossing around there in the next fight that the promotion would, promotion would be doing. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Well, we take risks. At King Vision SET and Showtime Championship Boxing, we present the best, and in doing that, you must stand up and be accounted for. You can't play games of Ledger Germain and try to play like you, Siegfried and Roy, and be the masters of illusion. We give you fights, and we give you fights in the personification of fights. And we like it because you like it, and that's what makes us, make, makes us a, a happy campus. On May 8th, see three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terrence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Joe McClellan for the WBC Middleweight Crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. Well, it's a bang up. Uh, somebody's going to get knocked out. Uh, who gets their emotions with the first is? Uh, I think Julian Jackson uh, is going to come around and uh, let people know who he is. He's a heck of a fighter, great banger. I think McClellan throws wide shots. Uh, you don't do that with a Julian Jackson. Comes up with shots, flary type of punches. I think he's going to be caught in the switches. I think when he tried to let those shots go, Julian Jackson is going to nail him. It'll be a knockout. It'll be a sensational fight. Uh, I think McClellan's got to look to try to be a little cute in this fight, stay away from danger, because Jackson's always dangerous. Either hand, and uh, I think Julian Jackson's going to have one of his finest nights. McClellan is a definitely proven good opponent. I think Jackson will win. He'll win by knockout. Not early. I think three, four, five, six, maybe. Um, that's going to be a good fight. Um... A lot, I've never seen McCullough fight in my life, so um, <clears throat> I really wouldn't know. But um, a lot of people say he's strong, just as strong as uh, Julian. So it's going to be a great fight. I can't really make a, a prediction on that. But I, I, I really would think that Jackson would be able to pull it out. Jackson McClellan's a great fight. There's two punchers. Now, we've seen uh, Julian Jackson on numerous occasions just, just obliterate people with one punch knockouts and a number of punches. But we've also seen him in recent times, Thomas Tate, in his last fight get hit, get hurt, get wobbled, get rocked, but again, come back. We've seen him throw punches for the entire fight, loading up all day long, so we don't have to worry about his endurance. It's going to be there. McClellan is a good puncher, so I think this fight is a real toss-up of who hits who first and who hits who the most. 
uh, Jackson McClellan's like lining up two armies with big cannons and letting them shoot with all their cannons at each other to see how many men is left, is left standing at the end. Both of them have the capacity to put each other out with one good stiff punch. Both of them got that punch. Both of them don't have great defenses, and both of them have been down. So that uh, what we're talking about here is like Russian roulette. I mean, it's, it's really a coin toss. Lennox Lewis is the heavyweight king. Tony Tucker plans on taking away the crown. Lewis versus Tucker, Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Now it's time for that portion of the fight that most people dismiss as only being mundane, and we're talking about the pre-fight weigh-in. This is where we take a couple of guys, bring them in here, in their underwear, no less, put them on a scale like that and try to determine whether or not they've come in under the right weight. Now, a lot of people don't think this is very serious, but it is taken very seriously, especially by each camp, because a camp can determine whether or not the boxer has made the weight he claimed he was going to make, whether or not he's in optimal fitness, and whether or not he's prepared to really have a fight, and they get a little chance to look at each other face to face, man to man, and know whether or not they're ready. So with that in mind, let's go to Jenny, Jimmy Lennon, and the weigh-in. Now, you know, the fight that everybody's really looking to rejuvenate the interest in the middleweight division is the fight between four, uh, the middleweight champion, Julian Jackson, and also the former WBO champion, Gerald McClellan. Now, McClellan renounced his WO title. Now, when they weighed in a day, McClellan weighed in at 160 pounds, and Julian Jackson weighed in at 159 pounds. Both look lean and mean. Both look ready to fight. Both look ready to rumble tomorrow night. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good fight. Hawk Jackson. Now we'll have the fighters in this WBC middleweight title crown pose in front for the photographers. And ladies and gentlemen, we move forward. Please have the camps be prepared for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship, Julio Cesar Chavez and Terrence Ali, you are next. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the long-awaited WBC middleweight showdown between these two tremendously powerful middleweights coming together tomorrow evening at the Thomas & Mack Center for the Star Spangled Glory. We invite the next camps up to the platform, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the second of our three world title main events is for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. First, I present the challengers ranked the undisputed number one contender with an outstanding record of 50 wins, seven losses, two draws with 21 knockouts. Please welcome to the scale, Terrence Ali. One hundred thirty-nine and one half pounds for Terence Ali. Now, ladies and gentlemen, stepping up to the scale, the five-time world champion in three weight divisions, eighty-six and zero with seventy-four knockouts, El Gran Campeón Mexicano Julio Cesar Chavez. One hundred forty pounds even for Julio Cesar Chavez. 140 pounds.
There they are, ladies and gentlemen, WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World, the second of our three world title main events coming up in the Star Spangled the Glory. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving forward to our main event fighters. Of course, this is the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World, the main event tomorrow night. And we shall begin with the challenger. He is ranked number one contender by the WBC, fighting out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, with a tremendous record of 48-1 and one, with 39 knockouts. He is the former IBF heavyweight champion of the world. Welcome up to the scale, Tony TNT Tucker. Here he is, number one contender, Tony TNT. Two hundred thirty five pounds. Two hundred thirty five pounds for Tony TNT Tucker. Ladies and gentlemen, the weight was 235 pounds even. 235 for Tony Tucker. Ladies and gentlemen, now up to the scale, we invite the first British heavyweight champion of the century, the 1988 Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. 235 pounds, the same weight for the defending champion, Lennox Lewis. 235 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the same weight for the defending champion, 235 pounds. Both of the fighters in this heavyweight championship weighed in the same at 235 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, reminding you, the Star Spangled Glory starting up tomorrow night, the Thomas and Mack Center, three world championship bouts. 
Ladies and gentlemen, want to bring to your attention, we have a big fight card coming up tonight at the Sands Hotel, right across the street. A big night of boxing. You might want to check over across the street at the Sands Hotel. Don King Productions presents Fight Night at the Sands. So make your plans this evening. Join us for a tremendous series of action. Well, I'm here with Bobby Chaz at the weigh-in. Bobby, that was like a surprise with uh, the two heavyweights. What do you think about that? Well, we got to speak with him a little earlier, and I think part of that layoff he's had for the past seven or eight months was adding a little bulk so he can be Jackson a stronger, and better puncher. Well, I mean, now, with Tony Tucker winning at 235 and, and the champion and winning at 235, yeah. this might change the odds a little bit. Uh, it could swing him. It might make him even a little higher. Lennox Lewis is already a big favorite. You have two great physical specimens, Ladies six foot five, 235, shapes up on paper to be a great bout. Now, how about a physical and Bobby Chaz, I know you, you were scheduled to fight Orlin Norris. That fight was postponed because you injured a hand in a car accident, right? Actually, the wrist and the shoulder, the Q10 tonight, is have an impacted fracture in my pelvis. That's the injury that's holding us off for a while. I'll get back into full contact training in June. But meanwhile, we're going to do a lot. We're going to see a lot more doing a commentary for the fights. Being a broadcaster and a fighter, which one you like the best? Broadcasting's a little easier now that I'm getting used to it. Physically, certainly, it's not as hard, but I'll tell you what. First time you're on TV live, it's nerve-wracking. I've been fighting all my life, so I'm used to that. Speaking of being on TV today, you were on TV today on the Montel Williams Show, and like you, like you, my wife is five months pregnant. Mother's Day is Sunday. What are you doing special for your wife for Sunday? You better not forget. Actually, I'm not doing anything special for her until I get back. I'm going to take her wherever she wants, get her whatever she wants. She's spending Mother's Day with her mom, and that's going to be special for her. You sent a card, right? Oh, yeah. All right, that there you go. Done. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go back to Jimmy. Jimmy right now and see what he's got to say with the, the fighters up there on his platform. We'll be back in just a second. Fans, reminding you of the big fight card tonight across the street at the Sands Hotel. Don King Productions brings you another evening outstanding action as we present Fight Night at the Sands. Starting up 6.30 tonight. So make your plans to join us right across the street for a huge weekend of boxing action. Once again, it's tonight. 6.30, across the street at the Sands. Title me? Okay. Well, we're still, still here at the weigh-in, and I'm here with Steve Alpert right now, who's going to be the, doing a color commentary for the fight. I'll ask the same question I asked Bobby. I think it's a, it's a surprise for Lennox Lewis to win at 235. What do you think? Yeah, I think some people are surprised, but this, this whole uh, fight takes on an air of intrigue, an air of mystery, because Lennox Lewis uh, Montel is, is really an unknown factor coming in. What most people know about him is the stunning second-round knockout of Razor Ruddick, whereas a guy like um, Tony Tucker, you're talking about a guy who has more uh, championship fight experience, although I question the caliber of fighters he's had more recently in preparation for this fight well, with I, Lewis. I, mean, I know you've been here like I have for some of the pre-fight training sessions. I watched Tucker the other day, and I'm going to tell you, I remember Tucker from like a year and a half ago, two years ago, when he would only throw one, two combinations. He was throwing one, two, three, fours, one, two, three, five, with three jabs on the end. He looks smooth. He looks like he's not that worried. What do you think about his attitude? Well, his attitude is very good. He's uh, in tremendous condition, very focused for this fight. In fact, uh, Stacy McKinley, his trainer, said that over the last couple of weeks, he's seen things in Tony Tucker he's never seen before. Tremendous foot movement and exquisite quickness. So we'll see if he can apply that in the fight uh, on Saturday night with Lennox Lewis. Chavez looks like he's just having fun. He's here. He's getting a payday. Terrence Ali, is he a viable opponent? He's a, he's a, he's a um, good opponent. He's always been in there with excellent fighters, undefeated fighters contenders and he's always given a good showing 
but the uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is certainly perceived as invincible. He's in a little bit of a, a psychological valley right now, coming off the tremendous high over Greg Haugen sure. and also looking ahead to Pernell Whitaker. But I don't, I don't see him posing much of a problem for Julio. Hey, we got to go back to Jimmy, but before we do, let me ask you: Mother's Day, Sunday. Yes. Is your mother still alive? Unfortunately you? not, Michael. Okay. I'm not married. Are well, you sending <laughs> somebody's two. mother something for Mother's Day? Absolutely. I'll, all right. I'll send some kisses there to you all go. your moms out there. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Michael. Sorry. Back to Jimmy. Well, we're still at the pre-fight weigh-in, and, and it's been concluded that the boxers have gotten on the scales, and we know how much they weigh, but I'm joined by Terry Norris, a man who, pound for pound, many are saying, really is the pound for pound best boxer on the planet. And I've got to tell you, I've been watching you fight, man. When you throw that punch, it's over. Life out. You saw him. Chavez got up there on the scale. What do you think? Um, well, he looks little to me. You know, it's uh, a lot of... You know, I want, I want to fight Chavez Poole. I'm the best fighter in the world. Pernell Whitaker wants to fight him. He said he's the best fighter in the world. So I got to get one of those guys in the, in the ring after they, whatever, they, they fight it off in uh, September and to prove that I'm the best fighter in the world. You know, now Chavez weighed in at 140 on the nose. What do you think? What weight would you meet him at? Well, 147, it was, it was the, the talk about weight. That I would come down to 147. Actually, I'm going up to 160 to fight for the middleweight title and to move back down to 147 to fight him. Right, that's a low. There's not too many fighters that are able to do that. What do you think about the Tucker and the Lewis fight? What do you think about that? Uh, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a, a, an exciting fight. It's going to see if uh, Tucker really wants to be a champion again. Look what we got here right now. Don King joining us. <laughs> Don, what do you think? I mean, the weigh-in, both fighters weighing in at 235? That wasn't expected, was it? No, it wasn't. I think that Lennox Lewis was scheduled to come in around 223, 224, 225 at the most. It tells you something, man. All the embodiments, all the ingredients is here. Tony Tucker going to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. You really think that? I really think that. Well, now, I'll tell you, up until yesterday, I was feeling that way. And I saw Tony. He looked real big. I didn't expect Lewis to weigh in this big. No, Do you think over. he's going to be able to pack, pack a punch with him? He's got a punch. A punch is going to have a punch. But there's a lot of weight for him to be carrying, and that ain't, the way, that ain't his fighting weight. You know what I mean? So you got a thing here where he's like 10 pounds overweight. Tucker's on time because if we're looking for him to come around 250, he's always been a 230, 235 fighter. Right. You know what I mean? He's always been a big guy. So he's on time with his weight. You know what I mean? And this other guy is overweight, according to how he is fought. Mm -hmm. But not only that, I think Tucker's intimidating this man. Oh, you can see it clearly on the stage. Now, Tony Norris is here, and I know he was smiling when he saw Chavez get up there on that stand. You think you guys will ever meet? One day, mm -hmm. one day at the end of the road, because he said, they, Terry said, Don ain't quite convinced that I'm the best in the world pound for pound. So I got to give him a, go have a convincing course. He's going to teach me. He's going to show me. Okay. You know I mean? I'm impressed with Terry Norris. I think that both of these guys are such star money winners, they don't need to meet each other right away. They're going to continue to make big money right on down the line, and then at the end, then they can meet each other. And that's when it will be something like mega, mega, mega. You know, the papers are like still trying their best to downplay this fight, Don. And I know with all the hype and everything that's been working at it, people are excited. You can sense it in the hotel. You can sense it in Vegas. Why do you think that the press is still coming down on this? Well, you know, listen, that's, it's always been that way. They can't compete with Don King. No other way than that I can try to use the propaganda course. Look at this room. This is, this is Muhammad Ali you know, for a heavyweight fight for a champion that, that never won the title in the ring. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. It's all to promotional ability and having cream down a cream fighters fighting each other when you got the best fighting the best. But this room tells it all. What can they say that can dispel when you got, a, you got enough people here to be in attendance of a fight? Well, I'll tell you now, you know, Julian Jackson and... Uh, McClellan Ooh. came in. They look. They both look real oh, mean. Oh, they, man, they're gonna fight. They they're gonna both get look down. real mean. Is this gonna be the event? Is this the one you're here watching, Tony? Uh, that's the one I'm here to watch. I'm moving up the middleweight. My next fight, so you know, Dylan Jackson just might be on my list. I'm McClellan. Whoever wins the fight. 
I think that's super. I think that I think Terry is a true star, and he's moving up to middleweight. That means you're going to be in a series of fighting them all. You know, when you say Pound Brown the best fighter, and that's what he's confident that he is, that means bring on all comers. They didn't ask me to pick or choose. Is they get anybody that will come, whosoever will, right. let him come. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm looking at look at Terrence Ali. Out of all the boxers who stepped on the scale today, I think his bravado and all that hype seems to be hiding some real fear in those eyes. What did you say? When he was up well, I tell you, he's going to put on a show because he's a veteran performer. And what he is doing, he's trying to challenge Julio to try to make him angry because when you're mad, you can't fight. Right. You know what I mean? When, this is why these guys stay loose as a goose, smooth, everything in rhythm. You know what I mean? And when you can keep that, you got control. You're directing the traffic. When anger directs the traffic, you have a problem. You have an opportunity to make a mistake. And so Terrence is using his last ploy, you know, before battle, 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 you know? Well, you know, I tell you, we're almost out of time, Don, but look, again, I'm looking at this, like you said, this is the same hype here for like the Ali I mean, fights, it's, it's the Tyson fights. Man, it's, it's, Tell them, why do they want to watch Ali this Tyson. fight? The stars the fight, and, and they're they going to watch it. The people are not going to be misled. This is a quality performance. You got three for the price of one. You got, a, a, you know, best against best. That means that you're going to have vintage creme de la creme matches. That means they get their dollar value for the entertainment dollar. They get their money's worth, and we guarantee customer satisfaction, and that's what it's really all about. With that, I tell you, we got to go back to Jimmy. We'll be back right after this. We're still at the pre-fight weigh and I'm here with Jimmy Ficaro, one of the men who really helps figure out the odds, determine who to bet on. I need to know, after watching these two guys weigh in at 235, Lewis and Tucker, who should I bet on? Well, the last guy, Dan, that usually people figure on, Montel, is the weigh-in. Looks like I'm going to see a lot of money on Tucker, only because I think Lennox is a little heavier than most people anticipated. I would consider Tony Tucker a live underdog. I would like to bet from here on out more money would be better on Tucker than Lewis, but a lot can happen between now and tomorrow. But it looks right now, Tucker might be the one getting the money. Now, how about in the McClellan and uh, Jackson fight? That's an interesting one. They both guys look like hard bodies. They're here with hard intentions on their face, bad intentions on their face. What do you think? I think Julian Jackson says, buckle up his shoes. He's in for a, in for a war. This kid can really punch, and obviously the Hawk has a great right hand also. I think that might be the most competitive fight of the night. I have jo Julian Jackson, a two-to-one favorite, but believe me, McClellan can win the fight. Well, you know, there are 2,000 Brits here from London in the hotels and the casinos, obviously laying down some money. You know who they're betting on, but I can't believe their turnout here at this. What, I mean, what do you think about this? Well, is it going to be good for betting? Well, sure it is. The last time I seen a contingency like this was when the Irish came over and Barry McGuigan fought a few years ago when he fought at Caesars Palace. This is good for boxing. They do come. They root for the fighter, but they also bet on their fighter. That's great. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to throw back to Jimmy, and we'll be back in just a second. We're here at the pre-fight weigh-in with Scott Kern, the president of SCT. Sir, I'm going to tell you, you're looking at this, you look at, at all the hype for the, the weigh-in, I mean, you got to be happy because you oh, know yeah. people are tuning in, right? No question about it. The, uh, you know, an event like this builds over time, and you look at it a month ago, uh, and as you know, this was a tough one because we won this fight at an auction. Right. We beat the other side. The other side, frankly, didn't want to cooperate as much in a promotion as we wanted them to. But when it gets down to uh, the pre-fight weigh-in and press conferences and where we are today, you look at a crowd out here that goes all the way back to the ballroom. Uh, this is a big fight. Yeah, you know, and I asked Don, I said, you know, we've got to just look and think in terms of the fact that 
since maybe Muhammad Ali fought. I don't remember seeing this many people at a pre-fight weigh-in. Well, you know, it's interesting because we looked at a British versus American kind of promotion, and Lennox Lewis's people said, absolutely not. Lennox Lewis is a man of the world. This is not about country versus country. And I, I hear... Right, that's right. not what I hear. That's here. right, that's not what I hear. So the, I, I find that really interesting. The papers are still, even to today, dogging this fight. They're giving, they're saying, why bother watching? Not legitimate, fraudulent. But I'm going to tell you, you look at what you got in this card, this is one of the best cards I've seen. Well, I you know it's interesting. As you looked a month ago, people didn't know that Tony Tucker had it together. But I think the first thing is, Tucker really, the fact that it's a three and a half to one odds, you know, and people say, well, you know, this isn't supposed to be Riddick Bowe. Well, as you know, Lennox wanted to fight Riddick Bowe, and Riddick right. Bowe is fighting a guy where the odds are 30 to 1. Yeah, it's amazing. I so, can't... you know, from, from that standpoint, you, so you've got Lennox Lewis, who is world heavyweight champion, against Tony Tucker, who really has, I think, the heart. Oh, yeah. Where he's got an opportunity, which you don't get often, to come back and, uh, and get that second chance. So, I, I mean, I've seen Tony, and he's really psyched. I mean, I think he looks we, great. Well, you've seen him on here. You've seen him. You've yes, talked sir. to him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we've got we to gotta take a little break. We'll come okay. back. We'll chat again. We'll be back right after this. Now, Scott had to take off, but I'm joined right now at the pre-fight weigh-in with Julian Jackson. And thanks a lot for being up here to, to answer a couple questions. You psyched the fights tomorrow night? Definitely psyched. Uh, I'm ready. I looked in the eyes of McLennan, and he could have hardly look at me. He was nervous, and you could see that. 159 pounds you weighed in. Did you make the weight you wanted to weigh in at? That's exactly what we wanted to weigh in at. I, I, I mean, you could see my body is in tremendous shape. I'm going to tell you, out of, out of the guys that weighed in today, the two of you are the most sculptor. The two of you look the most ready to fight. Is this going to be a war or what? Because everybody's saying it's not going past two or three. What do you think? It's sure not going to be a ballet dance. It's going to be a fight, and I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what McCollum is going to come out with because we sure definitely is going to dish out some punches. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Everybody's going to be waiting to watch this fight. I think you have as much excitement behind your fight as the heavyweights do. Good luck to you. And, uh, you know, don't eat too many Twinkies. Wait a second. What did you do for your mother for Mother's Day? What did I do for my mother? Yeah, Sunday? Mother's Day is Sunday after the fight. It, it's not here yet, so I can't see what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, you got to do something. You got to send her a card. Or, or are you gonna do that at least? I'm going to win the fight. I'm going to give her a knockout. That sounds like a Mother's Day prize to me. Right. Wait, Don, you're back. Come on back up for just a second, Don. No, I, I, I didn't mean to grab it. I was just talking to, to Julian Jackson, and, you know, Julian said, you know, he looked into McClellan's eyes and he saw some fear. And then I asked him, well, is it going to be a war? And his answer was a little tenuous. Now what do you think? I think it's going to be a war. I think that Gerald has never faced anything like this in crowd-wise. He's a little nervous. But when he get in that ring, a true fighter, when the bell rings, they go out and start to fight. And what he got most is his weapons, is his bombs. I think Julian is going to be in there because Julian had been through this before. He's well-armed. He's going to put on a show. We, this is going to be a vintage fight. This middleweight fight is, is like Hagler Hearns, you know, Le Hearns, Leonard. Oh, it's going to be Hagler, Leonard. I mean, you got them all mixed up in one because these guys are going to be at each other. You know, the calls are coming in from all over the world now, and I think the excitement is starting to build. You can feel it here. I'm telling you, for those people watching, you would agree you can feel it here in the casino. You can feel it outside when you walk around tomorrow night. Tomorrow Eight night is going to be a tremendous show here. The enthusiasm and excitement is growing with leaps and bounds throughout this whole t hotel, and you can see by what the newspapers have been seeing, the public ain't responding to that. And you know, what they have tried to do is put a campaign on us to try to hurt us because we put on the best shows. And vis-a-vis -vis the other people that are competitors of ours, we're killing them, man. We're just putting on the best quality shows, and they can't handle it, so they got to try to sabotage. So you know what?
so Lennox Lewis, he knew he was the WBC champion, but now he has the belt to show the world. I was very honored to receive the WBC belt. It's the most prestigious belt out there. You can't be the true heavyweight champion unless you're willing to fight the best. Lennox Lewis will not avoid anyone. He is the world heavyweight champion, and that means champion of every country. The Brits are coming again. Lennox Lewis represents England and the world. And Tony Tucker is going to be representing America. But I got more knockouts than this guy got fights. I gave Tyson his, his best fight at his best. I can tell you this, I'm going to win a title. The fact that I'm a champion now just makes me have to work a lot harder to keep it. I will bring the titles home to America. It'll be here in America, and it will stay here in America. Welcome to Lewis versus Tucker, Road to Glory. Now, here's your host, Steve Albert. I'm Steve Albert, and welcome to Lewis versus Tucker, The Road to Glory. On Saturday, May 8th, here in Las Vegas, the great Julio Cesar Chavez will defend his WBC super lightweight title against the number one contender, Terrence Ali. And WBC middleweight champion, Julian Jackson, will take on WBO title holder, Gerald McClellan. But when a six foot five inch, 220 pounder with a quiet manner and a murderous right hand climbs into the ring for the last bout of the night, he'll be making boxing history. For Lennox Lewis will be the first Englishman in almost 100 years to defend the most prestigious, most revered title in all of sports, the heavyweight championship of the world. Undefeated in 22 professional fights, this Olympic gold medal champion earned the respect of the boxing community with his two-round obliteration of the seemingly indestructible Razor Ruddock. This victory triggered a series of bizarre events that would lead to his coronation as champion. Now, he's facing the number one contender, American Tony Tucker, whose only loss was a 12-round decision to Mike Tyson. Since then, this six foot five inch, 235 pounder from Grand Rapids, Michigan, has run his record to an amazing 48 and one. While this transatlantic bout between these two very large and very talented heavyweights has provoked much nationalistic pride and patriotic zeal, it is rare, even by boxing standards, to find a fight so shrouded in controversy and steeped in intrigue. Coming up, the inside story on Lewis versus Tucker, the road to glory. Also fighting on May 8th with Lennox Lewis and Tony Tucker, five-time world champion Julio Cesar Chavez defends his perfect 86-0 record against one of the most eccentric and most talented fighters in the super lightweight division. Number one contender Terrence Ali, whose impressive record includes 52 wins. Julian Jackson, who's earned his reputation as one of boxing's best knockout artists with 43 KOs in 47 fights, puts his WBC middleweight title on the line against a super slugger in his own right, WBO champ Gerald McClellan. The King of England is coming to America. His name is Lennox Lewis, and he's the heavyweight champion. Riddick Bowe met the King and was quickly dispatched. Razor Ruddick's departure was equally abrupt. On May 8th, the King will grant an audience to Tony Tucker, the number one contender. Tucker has little respect for royalty. God may save the Queen, but nobody's going to save Lennox Lewis. Lewis versus Tucker, heavyweight championship, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view, Goyer Cable Company. Lennox Lewis of Great Britain is the WBC heavyweight champion. On May 8th, all of England will be watching when he defends his title against the number one contender, Tony Tucker of the United States. It's going to be another big disappointment for the Queen. Lewis versus Tucker, heavyweight championship, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali, Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. On 
May 8th, the three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terrence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Joe McClellan for the WBC Middleweight crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. The making of any fight can be a complicated business, fraught with treacherous twists and turns and sudden surprising pitfalls. But none in recent memory has been so complicated, so confusing as the WBC heavyweight title fight between Lennox Lewis and Tony Tucker. For it has involved at least one title belt, two different champions, three separate boxing organizations, and a multitude of warring promoters, managers, business tycoons, and even a talking chicken. We, we all signed a contractual agreement to, uh, you know, the best will box the best. He said we were fight raiser, but as long as he was guaranteed all the crack at the winner of Bowen Holyfield. So then the legal agreement was drawn up and it was signed by all parties. The winner out of me and Razor will box the winner out of Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bow. Lennox Lewis knocked out Rudolf in two rounds, became the official challenger, but Bo decided not to respect his written commitment and go on his own. They don't want to face me straight away. Lennox wants this belt. Must get it out of the garbage, and uh, then we'll be calling him the garbage pick. I was very disappointed and very sad. That's the most prestigious belt out there. This trash can now is the most valuable trash can in the history of mankind. This is the belt of Lennox Lewis. All champions would want to win the uh, belt in the ring. He did take away some of my glory, but it was a great honor for me. No doubt about their feelings for Bo during his weekend stopover in London. Both camps claim the other is running scared. Oh, I see. Riddick Bo showed up. <laughs> Thank God we aren't fighting uh, Lennox Lewis. He wants to basically take the easy way out. I'm just out to prove myself by boxing the number one ranked guy out there. The Brits are coming again. And Tony Tucker is going to be representing America. Lennox Lewis represents England and the world. I can tell you this, though. I'm going to win the title. Yeah. When they, when, hey, at the end of the fight, when they when, when they say the, the new heavyweight champion, we right here. No, I'm not into too much lip service, but I'm into action. And on May 8th, you're going to see a lot of action. Although only the unpredictable is predictable in the world of boxing, the awarding of the WBC championship to Lennox Lewis was unusual for two reasons. With the exception of Kenny Norton, Lewis became the only heavyweight in the long history of the WBC to be awarded the title without meeting and beating the previous champion. And perhaps more significantly, this quiet fighter from London's East End became the first and only Englishman this century to wear the heavyweight crown. Is he a fluke in boxing history? A brief pretender to boxing's loftiest throne? Or Will he dominate the division for years to come as the one-man British invasion? That's it, uh, All right, you guys take care. This is my seat. Born in England and raised in Canada, the soft-spoken Lewis has been embraced by the British sports fans for bringing the heavyweight title back to the birthplace of modern boxing. I'm a hero to them, and, you know, I'm, I'm their role model or their sporting hero. And, you know, that makes me feel good. For this beloved British fighter, the first major step on his road to glory began at the Seoul Olympics, where, in the gold medal round, he faced the American heavyweight and future world champion, Riddick Bowe. The first round was like a little chess match, you know. Um, he basically came to check me out, and I came to check him out. So I kind of picked up the pace a little in the second round, and I gave him two eight counts. The referee looked into his eyes and realized that, you know, his heart was gone and he didn't want it anymore. The referee just awarded me a decision.
Moving back to his native England, Lewis turned pro. With his large size, long reach, and powerful punching power, he ended his first 11 fights early. And within three years, ran his undefeated record to 19 knockouts in 21 fights. Although he held the British, the European, and the Commonwealth heavyweight belts, his first worldwide recognition came October 31st, 1992, at London's Earl's Court Stadium. I felt the crowd's energy. I kind of, you know, fed off it because there was a lot, of, a lot of people shouting my name. His opponent was Razor Ruddick, who had a reputation as not only one of boxing's toughest opponents, but one of the sport's most powerful punchers. I realized that if I stand there to get hit by any, either his left hook or his left uppercut, which was, you know, his most powerful punches, that he could hurt me. But he showed me an opportunity to hit him, so I hit him. I realized he's hurt. I didn't know how much he was hurt, but I'm not a guy to really go out there and just expose myself too quickly. Does this convincing win prove Lewis will dominate boxing's most dangerous division for years to come? Or will he disappear quickly like so many other European heavyweights? These questions will be better answered when he steps into the ring with America's Tony TNT Tucker. What are the odds for the Lewis Tucker fight? Here's Jimmy Vaccaro, odds maker at the Mirage. Current odds on the Tucker Lewis fight. Lennox Lewis is a six to one favorite. The underdog, Tony Tucker, you get four to one for your money. One of the more interesting props on this fight is a nine and a half rounds over and under. Remember, Tony Tucker, a crafty fighter, in 50 fights has been knocked off his feet. Went 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. He can go a long way. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali. May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali, Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. May 8th, see three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Gerald McClellan for the WBC Middleweight Crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali, Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. On May 8th, two genuine heavyweights with brilliant amateur careers and a combined professional record of 70 and 1 will fight it out for the WBC Championship of the World. But how is it possible that the challenger, a former champion with almost 50 wins in boxing's most glamorous division, is not a household name? And how did his only loss, a 12 round decision to Mike Tyson, put him into the Guinness Book of World Records. It is all part of the puzzling tale of Tony TNT Tucker. Life for the Hayway Tire of the World, I mean, it's, it's a blessing. You know, that I got a chance to reach my goal again, and, I, and I'm not gonna let it slip by. For Tony Tucker, the road to glory began in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Entering into the ring at the age of 13, he evolved into one of America's great amateurs 
winning virtually every important national and international title of the late 70s. But as a member of the 1980 Olympic team, he was bitterly disappointed when we boycotted the Moscow Games. When I found out that I wasn't, it wasn't going to be an Olympics, you know, that's when I, I switched gears and I started turning up to turn professional, and that's when I started pursuing my professional boxing career. His success continued into the professional ranks as he won 33 straight fights, 28 of them by knockout. A championship bout eluded him, but in a quirk of fate, the IBF stripped Michael Spinks of the title, and Tucker found himself fighting for the championship. Well, so Tucker was rated number two in the IBF, and I was rated number one. So what they did, they, they fought me and him together to win that vacant belt. Nice right hand, nailed. Buster Douglas, might be ready to go. Douglas looks like he might be out on his feet. Tony Tucker gets something. Douglas had better grab on, or Bill Clay will stop the fight. That's it, it's all over. I just praise the Lord. I was a champion, but just a part of a champion. I, I, I didn't feel complete until I fought Tyson to unify the title. Unwilling to accept easier fights and eager to unify the title, it took a supremely confident Tucker just 63 days to step into the ring against Mike Tyson, despite a fractured right hand. I said I could beat this guy with one hand, you know, throwing hooks, and, you know, and if I had to use my hand, I would use it, but I didn't think it would be as painful, as painful as, as it was when I used it. Only a punch away from winning, Tucker, with his bad hand, was unable to finish Tyson off. And at the final bell, Tucker, for the first time in his pro career, was not declared the winner. For the winner, by unanimous decision, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mighty Tyson. The worst thing in the world. I didn't even know what it was to be a part of a champion, a piece of a champion. Because it was so quick, you know, the transition was so, so quick. And then, like I, I say today, that uh, I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records for losing my title the fastest in history. <laughs> the emotional stress of the loss and management problems forced Tucker into a two-year retirement. But now he's back with a vengeance. Since his comeback, Tucker has 14 straight wins, 10 by knockout, and now believes he's only a step away from the title he so richly deserves on his road to glory. I thank God that he gave me a chance to do this again. I mean, it's like he rewrote the script. You couldn't do it no better than this. When Tony Tucker takes on Lennox Lewis for the heavyweight championship of the world, it'll be the first time in almost 100 years that a Brit has defended the bragging rights to that prestigious title. But why has this crown consistently eluded them? Could it be that they think a banger is a sausage? And pound for pound, a matter of economics? For the answers, we went straight across the pond. Yes, journey with us now, fight fans, to Old Blighty for a celebration of that unique brand of mediocrity and pugilism we're calling English leather, or England swings and misses. London bears go falling down. <laughs> Indeed, this precious stone set in the Silver Sea has produced its share of world-class poets and statesmen and thespians. But when it comes to the ring, it appears most Brits must agree with the bard, or rather heavy hitter himself. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Boxing in England? It's an oxymoron. Perhaps the greatest crop of heavyweight talent is going unrecognized and untapped in the British sporting community. I think there's a lot of there's tougher battles in Parliament, actually, yeah. All right, let's proceed directly to the chase. The last time a Brit was heavyweight champ, Churchill had barely started to smoke. Could it be their technique? Uh, many of them seem to have a brilliant punch they've learned over there, called a left jaw to the right glove. Is it perhaps breeding? You see, the British have always had a reputation to love a good loser, which is true. Could it be, perchance, the venue? Maybe they should uh, have the fights in pubs. I don't know. That, that might help. Perhaps some appropriate anecdotal material might engender a proper perspective. Probably the biggest embarrassment was a fighter by the name of Phil Scott. He was a heavyweight, and his nickname was Fainting Phil Scott, because every time he fought big heavyweight fights, he'd fall down and faint every time he got hit. I was involved with a fighter got in the ring and forgot to put his pants on. And God's on the truth. Supposedly, after Brian London had fought Muhammad Ali for the title in, in England, 
He left the arena without getting paid. So they sent somebody to his house with his check. They showed up the door and his wife came out and she said, you mean they're paying him for that? But is this not the very spot on the map where boxing itself was born? I hear you wondering collectively at your tellies, what went wrong? They like to do this and they stand up very straight. But what about that indomitable British spirit, that noble strength of character? Our boxing history might be a little bit weak over here, but we've got some real strong arm down wrestlers. I mean, this is a country that simply fancies mucking about at those roustabout club fights. And even has Emporia devoted solely to the art and practice of pugilism. We've had Madonna here many years ago, and um, all the pop stars come in. I mean, Maybe a random match could stimulate the game over there. Like, say, who'd you like in the Benny Hill, Milton Berle tilt? They both have similar styles. That's a belly bumping contest. Benny Hill didn't make it really on the English circuit. Milton Berle stayed on and on and on and on. I'd, I'd back Milton Berle. Lennox Lewis just might be the bloke to right all these decades of wrong. But let's give the last word on British boxing to Mr. Don Key. It's an exciting and it's a, it's a provocatively beautiful experience that I've had with England. That was our take on English leather, and we thank you. Here's oddsmaker Jimmy Vaccaro on Chavez versus Ali and Jackson versus McClellan. Terence Ali, a great fighter, number one in all three categories. But remember, he's going against maybe the greatest fighter that ever stepped into the ring. You have to post Chavez a huge favorite. And 20 to 1 will only mean that at least you'll get two-way action. You'll get people betting on Chavez and obviously people betting on Ali because A, he is a good fighter, and B, you're getting value for your money. Julian Jackson, Gerald McClellan, a very, very good fight. Julian Jackson, a 9 to 5 favorite. Those are very competitive odds. Gerald McClellan only lost two fights, but hasn't lost since 1989. Julian Jackson speaks for himself. Only the one bad mark against Mike McCallum. This fight should go right down to the wire. I couldn't tell you who's going to win this one. On May 8th, see three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Joe McClellan for the WBC middleweight crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. On May 8th, see three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC heavyweight championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Joe McClellan for the WBC Middleweight Crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. There are those who've only seen the one side of Julio Cesar Chavez. The side with the charm of a movie star. The looks of a rock star. And then there's the other side. See the dark side. Chavez versus Ali, Saturday, May 8th. Live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. On May 8th, see three championship fights. Lennox Lewis versus Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terence Ali for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Julian Jackson versus Joe McClellan for the WBC Middleweight Crown. Everyone who isn't fighting will be watching. Saturday, May 8th, live on pay-per-view. Call your cable company. The fight between Englishman Lennox Lewis and American Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship will be only one of three title fights held here in Las Vegas on Saturday, May 8th. Boxing's most prolific champion, WBC super lightweight champ Julio Cesar Chavez against the undisputed number one contender, Terence Ali. I'm not impressed. I just continue to fight. I'm not trying to reach 100 wins. That simply will come with time. 
fighting an amazing seven times a year, Chavez may reach 100 wins without a loss by the summer of 1995. But the man who truly believes he can stop Chavez's winning streak is the confident and cocky Terrence Ali. Ranked number one by all three boxing organizations, Ali, with his 52 wins, promises to take the fight right to Chavez. I'm more eager and hungry to fight Chavez now. I'm starving. I need, I need the recognition. I need to be somebody before I leave boxing. Terence Ali is coming out to fight. I'm coming out to fight. I'm not changing my style. We're going head to head. It'll be war. And also that night, Julian Jackson will defend his WBC middleweight title against Gerald McClellan in a battle to see who will be boxing's next KO King. When I deliver a, a, a good punch uh, and it hits the right place, uh, sometimes I feel a shock, um, especially in the right hand, uh, from the face to the elbow. And sometimes I just walk away. Jackson has stopped 43 out of 47 opponents for an unbelievable 92% knockout ratio. But this does not impress Gerald McClellan, for the young WBO champion has stopped 27 of his 29 opponents, 17 of them in the first round. Well, this is the important fight of my life. I would say the 26, 28 fights I have didn't mean nothing compared to this one. In the final bout of the evening, you'll have, for the first time in many years, two large and talented heavyweights in a title bout. While neither Lennox Lewis nor Tony Tucker are given to chest-thumping rhetoric and loud theatrical posturing, both men, in their own quiet way, fervently believe they are destined to be the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, this is going to be the first real heavyweight fight since Tyson and Douglas. And I'm going to prove that I'm the real heavyweight champion of the world out there. I'm hungry for it, you know. I want, and, and, it's, and it's not the money anymore. I want the recognition, the presence, the power, you know, the, the deference. I want it all. You know, it's, it, even just fight just it's not for the money, it's for the title. I want that title so bad, I can taste it. Oh, I want it so bad. You can see this WBC heavyweight championship bout along with Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terrence Ali and Julian Jackson versus Gerald McClellan. Live Saturday, May 8th, only on pay-per-view. I'm Steve Albert, and I'd like to thank you for watching Lewis versus Tucker, The Road to Glory. So long, everybody. Lennox Lewis, he knew he was the WBC champion, but now he has the belt to show the world. I was very honored to receive the WBC belt. It's the most prestigious belt out there. You can't be the true heavyweight champion unless you're willing to fight the best. Lennox Lewis will not avoid anyone. He is the world heavyweight champion, and that means champion of every country. The Brits are coming again. Lennox Lewis represents England and the world. And Tony Tucker is going to be representing America. So I got more knockouts than this guy got fights. I gave Tyson his, his, his best fight at his best. I can tell you this, I'm going to win a title. The fact that I'm a champion now just makes me have to work a lot harder to keep it. I will bring the title home to America. It'll be here in America, and it will stay here in America.
Welcome to Lewis vs. Tucker, Road to Glory. Now, here's your host, Steve Albert. I'm Steve Albert, and welcome to Lewis vs. Tucker, The Road to Glory. On Saturday, May 8th, here in Las Vegas, the great Julio Cesar Chavez will defend his WBC super lightweight title against the number one contender, Terrence Ali. And WBC middleweight champion Julian Jackson will take on WBO title holder Gerald McClellan. But when a six foot five inch, 220 pounder with a quiet manner and a murderous right hand climbs into the ring for the last bout of the night, he'll be making boxing history. For Lennox Lewis will be the first Englishman in almost a hundred years to defend the most prestigious, most revered title in all of sports, the heavyweight championship of the world. Undefeated in 22 professional fights, this Olympic gold medal champion earned the respect of the boxing community with his two-round obliteration of the seemingly indestructible Razor Ruddock. This victory triggered a series of bizarre events that would lead to his coronation as champion. Now, he's facing the number one contender, American Tony Tucker, whose only loss was a 12-round decision to Mike Tyson. Since then, this 6-foot-5-inch, 235-pounder from Grand Rapids, Michigan, has run his record to an amazing 48-1. While this transatlantic bout between these two very large and very talented heavyweights has provoked much nationalistic pride and patriotic zeal, it is rare, even by boxing standards, to find a fight so shrouded in controversy and steeped in intrigue. Coming up, the inside story on Lewis versus Tucker, the road to glory. Also fighting on May 8th with Lennox Lewis and Tony Tucker, five-time world champion Julio Cesar Chavez defends his perfect 86-0 record against one of the most eccentric and most talented fighters in the super lightweight division. Number one contender Terrence Ali, whose impressive record includes 52 wins. Julian Jackson, who's earned his reputation as one of boxing's best knockout artists with 43 KOs in 47 fights, puts his WBC middleweight title on the line against a super slugger in his own right, WBO champ Gerald McClellan. The making of any fight can be a complicated business, fraught with treacherous twists and turns and sudden surprising pitfalls. But none in recent memory has been so complicated, so confusing, as the WBC heavyweight title fight between Lennox Lewis and Tony Tucker. For it has involved at least one title belt, two different champions, three separate boxing organizations, and a multitude of warring promoters, managers, business tycoons, and even a talking chicken. We all signed a contractual agreement to, uh, you know, the best will box the best. He said we would fight Razor Ruddock as long as he was guaranteed all the crack at the winner of Bowen Holyfield. So then the legal agreement was drawn up and it was signed by all parties. The winner out of me and Razor would box the winner out of Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bull. Lennox Lewis knocked out Rudolph in two rounds, became the official challenger, but Bo decided not to respect his written commitment and go on his own. They don't want to face me straight away. Lewis wants his belt. We must get it out of the garbage, and uh, then we'll be calling him the garbage pick. I was very disappointed and very sad. That's the most prestigious belt out there. This trash can now is the most valuable trash can in the history of mankind. This is the belt of Liverpool. All champions would want to win the uh, belt in the ring. He did take away some of my glory, but it was a great honor for me. No doubt about their feelings for Bo during his weekend stopover in London. Both camps claim the other is running scared. Oh, I see. Riddick Bo showed up. <laughs> Thank God we aren't fighting uh, Lennox Lewis. He wants to basically take the easy way out. I'm just out to prove myself by boxing the number one ranked guy out there. The bricks are coming again. And Tony Tucker is going to be representing America. Lennox Lewis represents England and the world. I can tell you this, though. I'm going to win the title. Yeah. When they, when, hey, at the end of the fight, when they when, when they say the, the new heavyweight champion, we right here. I'm not into too much lip service, but I'm into action. And on May 8th, you're going to see a lot of action. 
Although only the unpredictable is predictable in the world of boxing, the awarding of the WBC championship to Lennox Lewis was unusual for two reasons. With the exception of Kenny Norton, Lewis became the only heavyweight in the long history of the WBC to be awarded a title without meeting and beating the previous champion. And perhaps more significantly, this quiet fighter from London's East End became the first and only Englishman this century to wear the heavyweight crown. Is he a fluke in boxing history? A brief pretender to boxing's loftiest throne? Or will he dominate the division for years to come as the one-man British invasion? That's it, time. All right, you guys take care. This is my seat. Born in England and raised in Canada, the soft-spoken Lewis has been embraced by the British sports fans for bringing the heavyweight title back to the birthplace of modern boxing. I'm a hero to them, and, you know, I'm, I'm their role model or their sporting hero. And, you know, that makes me feel good. For this beloved British fighter, the first major step on his road to glory began at the Seoul Olympics, where, in the gold medal round, he faced the American heavyweight and future world champion, Riddick Bowe. The first round was like a little chess match, you know. Um, he basically came to check me out, and I came to check him out. So I kind of picked up the pace a little in the second round, and I gave him two eight counts. The referee looked into his eyes and realized that, you know, his heart was gone. And he didn't want it anymore. The referee just awarded me a decision. Moving back to his native England, Lewis turned pro. With his large size, long reach, and powerful punching power, he ended his first 11 fights early. And within three years, ran his undefeated record to 19 knockouts in 21 fights. Although he held the British, the European, and the Commonwealth heavyweight belts, his first worldwide recognition came October 31st, 1992, at London's Earl's Court Stadium. I felt the crowd's energy. I kind of, you know, fed off it, because there was a lot, of, a lot of people shouting my name. His opponent was Razor Ruddick, who had a reputation as not only one of boxing's toughest opponents, but one of the sport's most powerful punchers. I realized that if I stand there to get hit by any, either his left hook or his left uppercut, which was, you know, his most powerful punches, that he could hurt me. But he showed me an opportunity to hit him, so I hit him. I realized he's hurt. I didn't know how much he was hurt, but I'm not a guy to really go out there and just expose myself too quickly. Does this convincing win prove Lewis will dominate boxing's most dangerous division for years to come? Or will he disappear quickly like so many other European heavyweights? These questions will be better answered when he steps into the ring with America's Tony TNT Tucker. On May 8th, two genuine heavyweights with brilliant amateur careers and a combined professional record of 70 and 1 will fight it out for the WBC Championship of the World. But how is it possible that the challenger, a former champion with almost 50 wins in boxing's most glamorous division, is not a household name? And how did his only loss, a 12-round decision to Mike Tyson, put him into the Guinness Book of World Records? It is all part of the puzzling tale of Tony TNT Tucker. Like for the Hayway Tire of the World, I mean, it's, it's a blessing, you know, that I got a chance to reach my goal again, and, I, and I'm not going to let it slip by. For Tony Tucker, the road to glory began in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Entering into the ring at the age of 13, he evolved into one of America's great amateurs, winning virtually every important national and international title of the late 70s. But as a member of the 1980 Olympic team, he was bitterly disappointed when we boycotted the Moscow Games. When I found out that I wasn't, it wasn't going to be an Olympics, you know, that's when I, I switched gears and I started trying to turn professional, and that's when I started pursuing my professional boxing career. His success continued into the professional ranks as he won 33 straight fights, 28 of them by knockout. A championship bout eluded him, but in a quirk of fate, the IBF stripped Michael Spinks of the title, and Tucker found himself fighting for the championship. Well, so Douglas rated number two in the IBF and I rated number one. 
So what they did, they, they fought me and him together to win that vacant belt. Nice right hand, nailed. Buster Douglas, he might be ready to go. Douglas looks like he might be out on his feet. Tony Stark against Brunson. Douglas had better grab on, or Bill Clay will stop the fight. That's it, it's all over. I just praise the Lord. I was a champion, but just a part of a champion. I, I, I didn't feel complete until I fought Tyson to unify the title. Unwilling to accept easier fights and eager to unify the title, it took a supremely confident Tucker just 63 days to step into the ring against Mike Tyson, despite a fractured right hand. I said I could beat this guy with one hand, you know, throwing hooks, and you know, and if I had to use the right hand, I would use it, but I didn't think it would be as painful, as painful as, as it was when I used it. Only a punch away from winning, Tucker, with his bad hand, was unable to finish Tyson off. And at the final bell, Tucker, for the first time in his pro career, was not declared the winner. For the winner by unanimous decision, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mighty Tyson. The worst thing in the world. I didn't even know what it was to be a part of a champion, a piece of a champion, because it was so quick. You know, the transition was so, so quick. And then, like I, I say today, that uh, I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records for losing my title the fastest in history. <laughs> the emotional stress of the loss and management problems forced Tucker into a two-year retirement. But now he's back with a vengeance. Since his comeback, Tucker has 14 straight wins, 10 by knockout, and now believes he's only a step away from the title he so richly deserves on his road to glory. I thank God that he gave me a chance to this again. I mean, it's like he rewrote the script. You couldn't do it no better than this. When Tony Tucker takes on Lennox Lewis for the heavyweight championship of the world, it'll be the first time in almost 100 years that a Brit has defended the bragging rights to that prestigious title. But why has this crown consistently eluded them? Could it be that they think a banger is a sausage? And pound for pound, a matter of economics? For the answers, we went straight across the pond. Yes, journey with us now, fight fans, to Old Blighty for a celebration of that unique brand of mediocrity and pugilism we're calling English leather, or England swings and misses. London bears go falling down. <laughs> Indeed, this precious stone set in the Silver Sea has produced its share of world-class poets and statesmen and thespians. But when it comes to the ring, it appears most Brits must agree with the bard, or rather heavy hitter himself. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Boxing in England? It's an oxymoron. Perhaps the greatest crop of heavyweight talent is going unrecognized and untapped in the British sporting community. I think there's a lot of there's tougher battles in Parliament, actually, yeah. All right, let's proceed directly to the chase. The last time a Brit was heavyweight champ, Churchill had barely started to smoke. Could it be their technique? Uh, many of them seem to have a brilliant punch they've learned over there, called a left jaw to the right glove. Is it perhaps reading? You see, the British have always had a reputation to love a good loser, which is true. Could it be, perchance, the venue? Maybe they should uh, have the fights in pubs. I don't know. That, that might help. Perhaps some appropriate anecdotal material might engender a proper perspective. Probably the biggest embarrassment was a fighter by the name of Phil Scott. He was a heavyweight, and his nickname was Fainting Phil Scott, because every time he fought big heavyweight fights, he'd fall down and faint every time he got hit. I was involved with a fighter got in the ring and forgot to put his pants on. And God's on the truth. Supposedly, after Brian London had fought Muhammad Ali for the title in, in England, he left the arena without getting paid. So they sent somebody to his house with his check. They showed up the door, and his wife came out, and she said, you mean they're paying him for that? But is this not the very spot on the map where boxing itself was born? I hear you wondering collectively at your tellies, what went wrong? They like to do this, and they stand up very straight. But what about that indomitable British spirit, that noble strength of character? Our boxing history might be a little bit weak over here, but we've got some real strong arm arm wrestlers. I mean, this is a country that simply fancies mucking about at those roustabout club fights. And even has Emporia devoted solely to the art and practice of pugilism. We've had Madonna here many years ago, and um, all the pop stars come in. I mean, 
Maybe a random match could stimulate the game over there. Like, say, who'd you like in the Benny Hill Milton Burl tilt? They both have similar styles. That's a belly bumping contest. Benny Hill didn't make it really on the English circuit. Milton Burl stayed on and on and on and on. I'd, I'd back Milton Burl. Lennox Lewis just might be the bloke to right all these decades of wrong. But let's give the last word on British boxing to Mr. Don Keats. It's an exciting and it's a, it's a provocatively beautiful experience that I've had with England. That was our take on English leather, and we thank you. The fight between Englishman Lennox Lewis and American Tony Tucker for the WBC Heavyweight Championship will be only one of three title fights held here in Las Vegas on Saturday, May 8th. Boxing's most prolific champion, WBC super lightweight champ, Julio Cesar Chavez, against the undisputed number one contender, Terence Ali. I'm not impressed. I just continue to fight. I'm not trying to reach 100 wins. That simply will come with time. Fighting an amazing seven times a year, Chavez may reach 100 wins without a loss by the summer of 1995. But the man who truly believes he can stop Chavez's winning streak is the confident and cocky Terence Ali. Ranked number one by all three boxing organizations, Ali, with his 52 wins, promises to take the fight right to Chavez. I'm more eager and hungry to fight Chavez now. I'm starving. I need, I need the recognition. I need to be somebody before I leave boxing. Terence Ali is coming out to fight. I'm coming out to fight. I'm not changing my style. We're going head to head. It'll be war. And also that night, Julian Jackson will defend his WBC middleweight title against Gerald McClellan in a battle to see who will be boxing's next KO King. When I deliver a, a, a good punch uh, and it hits the right place, uh, sometimes I feel a shock, um, especially in the right hand, uh, from the face to the elbow, and sometimes I just walk away. Jackson has stopped 43 out of 47 opponents for an unbelievable 92% knockout ratio. But this does not impress Gerald McClellan, for the young WBO champion has stopped 27 of his 29 opponents, 17 of them in the first round. What is the importance fight of my life? I would say the 26, 28 fights I have didn't mean nothing compared to this one. In the final bout of the evening, you'll have, for the first time in many years, two large and talented heavyweights in a title bout. While neither Lennox Lewis nor Tony Tucker are given to chest-thumping rhetoric and loud theatrical posturing, both men, in their own quiet way, fervently believe they are destined to be the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, this is going to be the first real heavyweight fight since Tyson and Douglas. And I'm going to prove that I'm the real heavyweight champion of the world out there. I'm hungry for it. You know, I want, and, and, it's, and it's, it's not the money anymore. I want the recognition, the presence, the power, you know, the, the deference. I want it all. You know, it's, it, even it's just like this, not for the money, it's for the title. I want that title so bad. I can taste it. Oh, I want it so bad. You can see this WBC heavyweight championship out along with Julio Cesar Chavez versus Terrence Ali and Julian Jackson versus Gerald McClellan. Live Saturday, May 8th, only on pay-per-view.